Hi, everyone. It's Steve Politi from NJ Advanced Media. This week's Rutgers Rant is brought to you by the New Brunswick Development Corporation. A big thank you to our sponsor and to all of our listeners for the continued support. Now let's get to the show. From NJ.com and the Star Ledger, welcome to the Rutgers Rant, your one-stop podcast for the Scarlet Knights. With your host, Steve Politi, and Rutgers Insiders, Keith Sargent and James Cratch. Let's start shopping. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Welcome back to the rant. Uh, the most unexpected Christmas gift of all for the Rutgers fan base. Greg Schiano was playing four-dimensional chess all along, guys. He knew, he knew if he just lost to Maryland, waited out a little bit, instead of going to the Bronx over the holidays, he would get his fan base to Jacksonville, Florida for the Gator Bowl, the greatest bowl uh, in Rutgers history. Sorry, sorry, I know we say this a lot. We, we tend to overreact and say this is the craziest story we've ever covered. But we, throw that, we throw that term a lot. I got to ask you, where does this rank in the pantheon of crazy Rutgers developments? Where does this bowl bid rank? I mean, it's right near the top. I mean, it is crazy. Look, I mean, there's some crazy stories, but a lot of them are negative, right? I mean, a lot of them, yes, you know, exactly. we don't need to rehash, you know, all that, but you, you know what I'm talking about. This one is overwhelmingly just positive, and it's just, yeah, I feel good. I mean, we, we've talked about, you know, in some ways, I don't know if it's karma, but, you know, in 2006, if you know the Rutgers Bowl history, the, the reward for, for the greatest season in, in Rutgers history when they went 10-2 and two in the regular season was the Texas Bowl, a game that was, wasn't even on local TV that, that, that you know, that they had to scrounge to get it on TV, you know, like, you know, against a, you know, it was, they've, every single bowl they played has been a second tier bowl game. So, um, and there's been some, you know, some, you know, games that Greg Shiano was really upset by going to St. Petersburg, you know, uh, you know, basically a week or two after the season, uh, right during the, in the midst of finals. I mean, they, they've really, ha- uh, you know, taken their lumps as far as, you know, some of the bowl, bowl trips that they, they've had, you know, in some ways this is karma, you know, I mean, the, the five and seven, and I'm writing it today, you know, in, in some ways it's fitting that, you know, it was ultimately their academic success, you know, you know, that, 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 that clinched the deal, you know, the fact that the tiebreaker, you know, when there were five and seven teams uh, needed Rutgers uh, academic pro- uh, progress rate was, was the thing that, that closed the deal. It really was an amazing uh, 48 hours to crash me, you know, first report was it wasn't going to have Rutgers didn't want it. Then immediately Rutgers wanted it. And then you jumped on the story and, and pretty much owned it from there. Um, I got to ask you now, though, that, you know, now that we're through that, just it, having Greg Shiano describe the logistics that what I can only describe as a very uncomfortable Zoom. Is uncomfortable the right word for the Zoom press conference? Just an unusual Zoom press conference. Oh, no, uh, I, I, it was very unusual. And un, it was just strange. I mean, it was like, I think, spoiler alert, if you if you watch the Zoom, I think it was, it was, you know, I think Richie at the night before at least put it up. I think other places put it up. The Gator Bowl was kind of like, yay, Rutgers. <laughs> it was like, look, I, I think these bowl, I mean, you know, these bowls are just, they're, they're scams. But anyway, we're not going to get into that. So I think when, when Texas a them drops out because of COVID, the, the the Gator Bowl committee, they've got big dreams in their eyes. Like, oh, we're going to get Florida State to come in. Uh, we're going to get Texas to come in. And then the NCAA Oversight Committee was like, yeah, you know that rule that we put in that the APR is going to select the five? Yeah, we're going to stay with We're going to keep that rule. And they're like, well, well but, but, but Shad Khan's Illinois. And like, no, like, Rutgers is number one. If they want to go, they got to go or you have no game. Which is so, what I'm we, – we debated this, like, going into it, where yeah. Cratch is, like, doing, doing – in, in, you know, in the lab working, you know, 15 hours a day breaking down all, like, the bull scenarios. And I said to him, as a skeptic of covering this for 20 years, that ultimately, Cratch, they're going to make up their own rules. Which they do. Yes, I thought they, they, they do make yeah. up their own rules sometimes. So, I mean, I'm, I'm stunned that, you know, they, they, they didn't, like, pull, like, some sort of uh, reversal and just say, screw it, we're, we're, we're bringing Texas. Dan, they Dan tried. Said it best. The cor- corruption usually wins. Gr- griff Graft wins in the bowl season. <laughs> yeah, I thought so, too. I, look, the way Greg McGarity and the, uh, the other the gentleman that called 
Pat Hobbs, Pat Dobbs. Uh, oh God, we're speaking. It didn't seem like like they were like. I mean, like, look, they're not gonna have a game if Rutgers isn't there. But it, it did. I think it took a, a little bit to like uh, over the finish line just because I think they were you know trying to exhaust every other option possible before they did the right thing. <laughs> I have to laugh. I what they did. So if you missed this, they introduced the athletic director Pat Hobbs as Pat Dobbs during the press conference and I have half me I have envisioned at the end of it someone telling the guy you mispronounced it and he'd be like well I got Rutgers right come on I mean give me you know, give me a break here I got Chiano right can't be can't be perfect this just happened 10 minutes ago the amount um, of people chuckling when, when, when he said that I you know I was so oh, man yeah, do you think that, was, that was an awkward moment do you think Pat Dobbs and, and Rob Ash ever go to lunch <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> don't don't go there people still mad at that one uh all right, so Chris, now now the next six days, I, I listened to Greg Shane try to describe this to me, to us on, on this on this call. Um, you know, they, they, the team gets here on Christmas. Uh, I guess they're going to practice the to, you know the next day. They have to fly to Jacksonville at some point. The game's at eleven o'clock on the thirty first, so they can't really have a physical practice the day before that. I, how many practices are they going to be able to to get to prepare for this game? Not many, I guess. So Sunday they'll work out. Monday they'll work out. I think they'll either they'll they'll either fly there Tuesday or Wednesday. They'll they'll work out the day they fly there. I would assume that they will right. work out and fly. So that's uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You can't do much. Friday game time. So yeah, like maybe one real practice, maybe two. Mm-hmm. If yeah. look, it's going to be a time crunch. You got to throw a game plan together for a Wake Forest offense that's not only prolific, but it's unique. It's strange. They do a lot of different things. You know, their defense isn't great, but you know it's been good enough to win ten games and win the Atlantic Division, the ACC. So, uh, this is a really quality team. I mean. When this first all, when A M first pulled out, I didn't think there's any conceivable way that they could pull this off. They did, and right. there was a whole yep. line of people willing to do it behind them afterwards. Yep. So I'm intrigued to see what happens. I don't think the Scarlet Knights are necessarily going down there like in the best situation to play Wake Forest, but Greg Shiana seemed pretty confident that it's a good enough situation. All right, so I, I, I wrote, and some Rutgers fans were not happy about it. Did not love the idea of playing the game. I thought there were, because of these reasons that logisticals made this a really bad idea. Um, yeah, I'm not going to sugarcoat how I feel about it, guys. You know that at this point. We're in the game now. Uh, let's look at the other side of it, though, Sarge. And, and I'm, you know, it, it, if you talk, if you just want the positives of what this can mean, Greg Shannon doesn't have to answer that question next year when you get in the steam to a bowl game. And uh, and if he if he was going to, and when he was asked that question next year, chances are that it was going to be a no next year based on that schedule. You know, if you look for projecting it forward, this ends that streak. It helps recruiting. I mean, give me a give me a sense of what what you think. Why he was so anxious? Because it's going to be an infomercial. Bowl, the bowl games, as Cratch has, has said, they're 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 not. These are you know shows. You know, I mean, they, they're you know it's going to be a, a nine day or eight day now infomercial for Rutgers. I mean, you know, we're going to flood the the website with stories. All of them are going to be overwhelmingly positive. You know, it, it, there's going to be national media, you know, covering. They've already, uh, you know, there's a lot of interest in this game because of, you know, just how unique it is. You know, if Rutgers somehow pulls off an upset, it's going to be probably the, uh, one of the biggest uh, stories of, of, of the bowl season. So all of that is great, you know, as, as a time slot leading into the college football playoff. That was the whole thing. Like, you know, that is what, the, the one thing I had heard when the, there, there was like a lull and whether or not, you know, the, the NCAA uh, committee had to meet. Everyone wanted this Gator Bowl to be played because, it, you know, it, the, the time slot it leads into the college football playoff. So it's a marquee time slot. That's the other thing. Like, this is the first – the reason why this is such a big deal for Rutgers is because it's the first time they've – you know, they're playing on a, you know, a, a tier one, what's considered a tier one bowl game. You know, you know, it's not New Year's Day, but you know, all you know, the, the marquee bowl games this year are being played on 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 New Year's Eve. So, you know, it's the first time they've been able they're, they're they're playing. Remember, guys, you know, the international bowl in 2007, a year after 2006, you know, after after that season, they had to play on like January 9th. It was like the last bowl game in Toronto. So, you know, St. Petersburg Bowl, they had to play on the first day of bowls, like on December 19th. 
none of that is good for recruiting. You know, what, what they want to do with recruiting is they want actually the rec- recruits to actually see the games. So this is going to be a nine day inf- infomercial. And, and, you know, for, from a recruiting perspective, that's going to be a huge win for, for Rutgers. All right. So we're going to dive into personnel deep here in a minute in true or false, but I, let's talk about the quarterback um, because you know, obviously, I think a lot of fans immediately saw this and say, okay, well, great. This is an opportunity for, for Gavin Wimsatt to finally get, get to play. This, this is a great chance for him to, you know, to get out in the field. And we haven't seen him but more than a few a couple plays here and there. I crash, I get the sense that that's not what's going to happen. Um, that it's probably going to be no event drill. I mean, Shannon, I hate that, that game plan wise, he's not going to reinvent the wheel here. It was, exactly, it was his exact quote. I mean, what do you think quarterback-wise? Is, is that your sense as well, that we're probably going to see the same offense we saw before the season ended? I would guess so, just because of the time crunch. And because at this point, you know, like, you've already lost Cole Snyder to the transfer portal. And, you know, you burned Evan Simon's red shirt. And then if you went out there to the bowl game and it's like, all right, we're starting Gavin, well, then what's he going to stay here for? And all of a sudden, then you've got, two scholarship quarterbacks and maybe one at some point. So no. And, and plus it, it, this is like a fun house mirror effect at the end of season banquet where Rutgers like said goodbye for the year. We spoke to Greg Schiato after it on December 12th, I believe it was. He didn't come out and say it directly, but he basically intimated that Noah Vedral is going to would start spring practice as the start. So I assume he would start the Gator Bowl <laughs> as the starter. Then. It, it, he would have to. I mean, there's just really no way you could, you could, you could adjust that in, in this short of time game plan against a good opponent my goodness uh, all right let's dive into true or false fellas we've got a lot of topics here because uh and it's just we're really guessing now on a lot of these because we just don't we don't know what the hell's gonna happen we're just being honest i don't know if they know what the hell's gonna happen we don't certainly all right so here we go true or false first would have been seven and five not ten and three had they played rutgers schedule cracks true or false i'll say false sarge false false i think i think you're right they're very good all right true or false rutgers owes this bull bid to Chris Ash. I am going to say false. All right. Um, so check out the website right now. I just actually, you know, it, it's uh, nine o'clock on, on, on Christmas Eve. And I just tweeted it out. Chris Ash getting deserves credit and uh, just, you know, go read the academic uh, story that I just wrote. You know, I mean, Chris Ash absolutely deserves no. credit for improving <laughs> the culture after in 2015, the single year APR dipped to 948 under Kyle Flood. Chris Ash came in to improve the culture, and the, the reason why the multi-year APR, which was a tiebreaker, and, and, the, and the thing that was used, it was the 2019-20 scores, which are all credited to Chris Ash. Chris Ash deserves, a, deserves an assist. I would, yes, you can give Chris Ash a little credit. I think more credit would probably be owed to Scott Walker, Scott Walker. the academic yes, support exactly. staff. And, 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 and Sarge, like, I don't want to, like, belay, like it's, this is, like, way over history, but, like, they had, like, 10 guys arrested in a calendar year, okay? So let's pump the brakes on the culture improvement. Uh, Chris Ash is going to be in Jacksonville, guys. Wouldn't it, I mean, can we, can we get a press pass? go to the Jacksonville Jaguars facility, Sarge, and just stand there. Not even talk to him. Just stand there at the edge of practice field and just see if he just glances over and sees the two of us. With, I mean, would there be anything? If that's worth a day in Jacksonville, right? Not even ask God. anybody. Just show up, fold your hands. Ah, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, Jaguars, <laughs> Trevor Lawrence. Oh, my God. All right, lost my train of thought. That, I'm out. I'm order. I'm getting, I'm getting those credentials today. All right, true or false, Bo Melton will play in the Gator Bowl. I'm going to say false. No information, just a gut feeling false. Sarge? No inside information. I'm going to say false. Uh, yep, same here, false. O three 3 will play. I will say true, I think. Okay, Sarge? I'll say false. false. I'm going to say true. It looks, it looks like he's happy about it on, on Twitter. Isaiah Pacheco will play in the Gator Bowl. Crash, true or false? No inside info. I'm going to say false. Big one. He better play in the Gator Bowl. Um, I'm going to say true. True? All right, I'm going to say true. No inside well. information. Yep, true. All right. True or false? Keontae Hamilton will lead the wrestling team and play in the Gator Bowl. Crap. I would expect oh, that would happen. True. True. All right. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Cratch, every time I would bring this up during the season, like he would bristle. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, lead, uh, lead the wrestling team uh, for the bowl game or just leave it the wrestling team no, in just general. The <laughs> in general? <laughs> I see what you're doing there. I like it. I like it. Yes, I will say true. <laughs> true. All right. I'll go true, too. All right. Uh, and finally, true or false, on the planet most excited about this news is 
Steve Peichel. <laughs> True or false, sorry. True. 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 Yes. <laughs> get, get us, forget that the basketball team has vanished from the from the planet um, under under strange circumstances. Okay. Why do you think Bo Melton's not going to play? Because that's a big one. This was I, look. I think Bo is the most serious NFL draft prospect of right. everybody, and the Senior Bowl is coming up, and a lot of these guys have started to train and everything. You know, I, look. It's the reason why I said true to 03 is I think one 03 is a guy whose stock slipped a little bit this season. So if he's healthy, which is a question because he had a hamstring injury, you know, and a guy like him gets kind of gets to control his exit from Rutgers at that point, because he obviously didn't get to play in the last few games. So that's why I said him. And I think Pacheco, it's just Pacheco's got two showcase events coming up, NFL training. I think it's really hard. I think it's it's a lot to ask all of the NFL draft guys to come back on such short notice. I think they're going to get a bunch of them. You know, Drew Singleton, Julius Turner, I know, definitely wants to play. But, yeah, I just think for those two guys, especially Bo, I don't know if it makes a whole right. lot of yeah, sense. I mean, some of them just – I mean, sorry, this is natural, and some of them would just – have moved on, move up mentally. You're like, you're done. You're... This was playing in the pinstripe bowl, I would have expected some of these guys to right. set out because we're seeing this trend, you know, across the country. We've seen this over, over the last couple of years that, you know, guys who, you know, start looking at, you know, with, with an eye on the NFL, um, just bow out of, uh, you know, avoid playing in the bowl game. So, you know, this isn't uh, unique, but I mean, fact that, you know, they, they all had to be called back. Yeah, I, I think that there's, you know, going to be a good portion of the uh, seniors uh, who are buying the NFL who are going to sit out. All right. So let's dive into this then a little bit. If, if in fact, uh, you're missing Bo Melton, the offense's problems are, are as glaring as they were at the end of the season. I mean, this offense was really non-functional toward the end of the year. I mean, Wake Forest's defense isn't good, but it's still – I mean, neither was Maryland's defense, and they weren't scored against them. I mean, what, Crash, just, just overall, what do you think now is the biggest concern then, based on what we think we know about the personnel going into this game? It's the offense. I mean, it's it's the ability. It's it's twofold. It's one. It's the offense you mentioned, non-functional. You know, if, if Pacheco doesn't play, it's really going to get interesting because you know my understanding is Kyle Manungai had like you know minor routine off-season cleanup yeah. surgery. You know, so and there are probably other guys who had you know similar procedures like that who are are going to be ready for spring ball, even ready for winter workouts when they begin in January, February, uh, but they're not going to be ready for this game. You know, I think the other major issue is Wake Forest is a tremendous offense, and you have a defense that doesn't have a defensive coordinator, although I don't think that's a very big deal in the grand scheme of things. And, you know, was struggling and, you know, lack of a pass rush, you know, so it's just – I think, I think it's, a, it's a tough matchup for Rutgers in the sense that Wake Forest is going to score points, which is fine if you can also score points, but this offense is not equipped to be Rutgers' best defense. Yeah, I, I'm actually more concerned about the defense. If that, if, I mean, and it's even if it's even if everyone comes back, which seems unlikely. The way that defense was torched by Maryland, uh, and, and it's just breakdowns. You don't have your quarter. You say it's not a big deal, but it, any continuity is important. We've seen the way the Wake Forest can score points really good offensively. Sarge, I, I, I guess uh, I get the point that the offense has been bad, but you don't want to go in this game and be down 35 to seven in, in the second quarter. Yeah, I they have two thousand yard receivers. Uh their quarterback, you know, is completing at a you know really high clip, you know, through for almost four thousand yards. Uh, you know, he's really good. They they run a RPO uh you know pass heavy o- uh, offense and you know they their offense is really good. They're they were one of only uh you know three um they're only uh, one of nine teams this year to score over five hundred points. Um, they're good. What I, what the other interesting thing, you know, from a Rutgers perspective that we, we, we learned is basically the, the week after the Maryland game, they actually practiced that, that week. Now I would imagine it was mostly developmental, probably a lot of the underclassmen, you know, I it would probably hard, been hard to convince like the NFL guys who we mentioned, or even Noah Vedral to, to practice that week, but they practiced that week. And then they worked out the following uh, the, the week after that. Um, again, probably developmental, but I would not be surprised. And, and you know, and I'd have to take a look at the, the full number, but a, t- a, a large percentage of the 2021 incoming recruits 
um, did not play this season. I would not be surprised if we we're going to see some, you know, collegiate de- debuts in the bowl game. Really? That's interesting. Like who? Only because they, they, you know, for, you know, they, like I said, they, they spent the week after the Maryland game working, you know, when, 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 when he takes stock on Sunday, when, when they're going to report back, uh, you know, uh, on, on Christmas night. And when he takes the stock of, of what they have back, you know, who's available, I would imagine some of those you know developmental guys who and you're not burning worry about it burning a red shirt. If anything, you're 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 you know you could use this game as, as you know a, you know a, you know a, an exhibition for you know next season. Um, yeah, I would not be surprised if we're going to see you know a, a few of these guys uh, from this uh, you know most recent uh, recruiting class who did not play this season or might have played one game like you know in the you know in the in the Delaware game or something like that. Um, yeah, I would imagine that we're going to see some some guys uh, make you know make their debut. Wow, one more uh, very interesting wrinkle uh, that I hadn't considered. All right, let's dive into some uh, Rutgers insider question, guys. Uh, we had about a hundred of them last night when we put out the emergency podcast uh, email uh, text to the uh, to our uh, Rutgers insiders. A lot of great questions. A lot of them that we uh, I don't I can't answer. <laughs> Maybe just can't answer. We'll try. I, I love do our the best ones. I love the demands for emergency pod. I felt like it was like, like Tom Brokaw, like when they, you know, they break in with the NB, the dramatic music, NBC special report. And you're like, what happened? Like the president died and a massive earthquake hit, hit the West coast. And we at war. And it's like Rutgers is going to the Gator bowl. <laughs> we must podcast. My wife's like, it's Christmas Eve. What the hell are you doing? We must podcast, honey. Rutgers is going to the Gator bowl. You don't understand what this means all right uh there's a lot of there was a bunch of questions on the travel situation um curious if students are going to go and uh thanks for all your work on short notice uh, my question is does Rutgers have anything for the fans to go last minute travel packages special charter planes events I, I don't know that they figured out that how they're going to get there sorry so <laughs> do they have anything for fans great question so here, here's what i learned last night um there's no specific, you know, normally you, you would give an allotment of tickets and have the school sell. That's not the case. Um, there's just not enough time. So what Rutgers officials are encouraging people, just go to the uh, official bowl website, buy the tickets off that. And if there's an option to take to sit on the SEC side, which is, you know, obviously Texas A&M, Rutgers is taking the place of Texas A&M. Um, so, you know, you don't want to be sitting on the Wake Forest side if you can help it. Um, so that's one. Two, as far as um, – so there are no specific packages, bowl packages or anything like that. Uh, there is a pep rally on the 30th. It's at the uh, Jacksonville um, uh, Seaport Pier, I believe, you know, on, basically uh, you know, on, 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 on the beach. Um, that's on the 30th of the evening, you know, uh, you know the eve of the game. Um, you know, beyond that, I mean, yeah, I, I, I've already talked to a few fans who have said, you know, who, who are looking for, you know, the Rutgers bar. There's generally, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, one location for Rutgers fans to congregate. But, you know, keep in mind, guys, I mean, this is, you know, short notice for us. I, you know, Politi and I are, are planning on the travel. Uh, Cratchit, you know, has, ha, you know, has a wedding that's going to preclude him from going out there. But everyone's scrambling to go out there flights are really really expensive you know and so it's not the easiest uh, you know the, the inside bowl i think had fifteen thousand fans travel to it that was the most uh generally speaking they probably get about you know seven thousand to eight thousand fans uh going to you know the, uh, these games i would not have expect more than five thousand Rutgers fans to be able to travel to. well i was going to say sarge I- hey Rutgers rant listeners it's steve politi from nj advanced media We appreciate you supporting this podcast and the sponsors who help us continue doing it. This week's podcast is brought to you by the New Brunswick Development Corporation. If you listen to this show, you love Rutgers. And if you love Rutgers, you know the positive impact that DevCo has made on the campus and its community. We thank the New Brunswick Development Corporation for its continued support and for helping make this podcast possible. Now back to the show. I. You mentioned like my, my sister's getting married Thursday night the thirtieth, so I briefly entertained. Uh, is it even possible to get <laughs> for such a momentous occasion? I mean, guys, yes. it's the Gator Bowl. Um, it is. Yeah. It is the Gator Bowl. The Rose Bowl. Rose Bowl you, I mean, it would have been hard to. Yeah, you would have had an, an extra. Oh game. yeah, like Rose Bowl. I would have been like, I I, I love you, Amy. Uh, best of luck. <laughs> Does but, Defco have a helicopter? The like, Rose Bowl. If it was your own marriage, you probably would have told. <laughs> yeah, we. we I, I th- I, honestly, like, I think my fiance would understand it. It's the Rose Bowl. Time in the parking lot, oh. the Rose Bowl. Oh gosh. So 
I looked at it and it was like, you know, no flights out of Newark. It, the, the, the killer is the 11 a.m. kickoff. You know, you can't even, usually there's a lot of flights from our area that like leave early in the morning, get to Florida. Nothing leaves from Newark that gets you there before like halftime. I'm not like LaGuardia. There's like, a, there was like a 6.30 a.m. flight. And it's like, that's really pushing it to, to go to LaGuardia not get delayed um obviously flights are getting canceled all over the country because of covid issues with the with the airlines you know uh, i look like there are no i think it's a it's a covid thing like there are no you there's no more 11 o'clock flight out of it from north to atlanta so you get to atlanta airport and then get on a regional jet the next morning so i think it's gonna be very hard between flight availability prices and the sheer fact yeah. that this virus is, is wreaking havoc on the scheduling for the airlines to, for a bunch of Rutgers fans to get there. So if it's not a great turnout for Rutgers fans, no one should give Rutgers fans any grief. No. There are so many things working against them right now. No, I, I got my <clears throat> I got my flight for about eight eight hundred bucks, and I got it right. Like I, you know, what, I'm just going to book this thing. This 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 is heading in this direction. Uh, Sarge is driving, so he's got room in the car. If yeah. A couple of you want to um, just send him an email. A couple of you want to ride in the back seat or, or a truck or something. You get them down there, right, Sarge? You can I, that. I listen to a lot of uh, you know classic rock and um, you know Counting Crows and you know Radiohead and and so the music will be playing the whole ride. So I mean, it's, it's a fun ride. Next time, <laughs> driver, I can tell you. Um, the <laughs> crest is Wake Forest travel. They were getting in the weeds. My ACC days, I don't remember them being – they weren't good. They were terrible back then. Of course, this was 30 years ago. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, they've gotten better, clearly. Uh, is Wake Forest travel crunch? Uh, you know, I don't think Wake Forest travel is great, but, like, you know, like, I was – Okay, so like the Gator Bowl is a really good bowl game. It's in sunny Jacksonville, Florida. Not the best city in Florida. You know, there are other cities I would rank ahead of Jacksonville, but, you know, it'll do. So I would think that this is, you know, this is pretty good for Wake. You know, I imagine that Wake, you know, and, and the other thing going for Wake travel too is they didn't really have to burn much money to go to the ACC title game because I was in Charlotte. So, you know, I think this – I could see there being a nice Wake Forest contingent – simply because this is something that they don't do very often. It's kind of special. But on the other hand, this is a team that's won the ACC and like been in the Orange Bowl in our lifetime, so they might not be that jazzed either. All right, some more questions here from our uh, insiders. Uh, this injury concern question. Uh, Greg sounds confident Rucker will be able to play in a week. Initial thoughts by fans and media were that players might not be ready to play. And at risk of injury, what's coming out of their camp that suggests players will be ready to play that's from Craig Bowen, a uh, alumni alum in San Antonio. Uh, Cratch, he he was pretty uh, he was pretty certain. Giano said that he would not play this game about physical problems. No, he was, and I think that the fact that they practiced that week after the season, um, and it, we'll have to follow up. But like, I thought it was kind of interesting that he, you know, he mentioned that there was some sort of situation where they, they thought they were gonna get into a bowl. I don't know oh. if it was they thought so. Yeah, I mean, Cratch. I mean, after the Maryland game, Greg Schiano dismissed our bowl questions about like he just basically, and then I yes. knew they were huddled inside the Hale Center that night. Looking at, yeah. you, know, you know, Middle Tennessee State and, like, all these <laughs> – Memphis. He admitted it. He admitted it. <laughs> remember? Remember? Like, he, like after, after the press conference ended, he walked into the room and, they, like, they literally flew in Steve Kornacki and they had, like, the board <laughs> up and they were like <laughs> – Oh, and yet yeah, yeah, during the press conference, you know, Greg was like, oh, I, you know, we're, we're just worried about the guys in the locker room and we're not, we're just not worried about the bull thing. And yet, oh, my God, they literally practiced the following week, even though on, on that Saturday night, like we knew, like there were there were there were enough bull teams and they still practiced the following week. What's 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 the Wyoming Hawaii score when he walks out the room? <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, did you guys see that late last night? Yes. Oh, my God. I mean, talk about, like, you know, <laughs> it goes to show you, I mean, like, at a moment's notice, if this thing had dragged on, Eddie, if that happened two days earlier, Memphis probably is going to the Gator Bowl. Would they fly that back been a across true... the country? Come on. Would they leave Hawaii and fly to Florida to play in a video bowl game? What, did, did you really think so? Probably, they probably would have. Yeah. That's crazy. They probably would have. Hawaii. They would have been like America's Cinderella story. Like, imagine you go to Hawaii to play Hawaii. Like, that should be the safest. Bo- like, they're literally on an island, yeah. and Hawaii 
And like, let me tell you something. Like Hawaii, like they had like a hit, like there was a story about like Todd Graham, you know, internal strife. Memphis was gonna like those Hawaii was not gonna play hard. I, I, I gotta tell you, Memphis was gonna roll. I love. I've always loved the Hawaii Bowl, and you know, to, to it, it might be the reason why I might ultimately get a divorce because you know Christmas Eve is like the one, one time where you should not be watching sports. But I've always just been intrigued by by you know you know a college football game on Christmas Eve. I should be watching It's a Wonderful Life or a Christmas yeah. Story or something. No, like that. he hasn't divorced you yet. She's not gonna family. <laughs> So you uh, might have to have to go to, to, to Jacksonville on New Year's uh, New Year's Eve week. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked us, by the way, to, 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 about what 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 does this mean for your family plan? And I'll just tell us really quick. And, and I sort of started the story too. Obviously, we got Cratch's wedding. If they went to the if they went to the pinstripe bowl, I would have been screwed because I have and like this is how. Certainly, my wife does not listen to the podcast. I have like two thousand dollars invested in theater tickets for her for Christmas for her and her family on December 29th at two o'clock, which of course is exactly when the pinstripe ball kicks off. So for me, it's, I can leave. I get two fewer days with my in-laws. I can get on a plane, fly to Florida. So I, this is fine. I, this is not, I've got no problem with the Gator Bowl. Um, but we have to. So the other thing I have to laugh when you mentioned Hawaii not wanting to play hard in that game. That was the undercurrent crash of this press conference. I, I think they were, they're convinced that Texas A&M could have played in this game. It could have gotten a roster out there and just didn't want to. That's the sense I got. Yeah, I mean, I think that, that sense is out there. There's all kinds of conspiracy theory. I mean, I think it's hard to fault. One, like, why would Texas A&M not want to play there? Texas A&M designed the greatest recruiting class in history. If they lose this game, it doesn't matter. You know, they, they beat Alabama. Like, that's – like, so I don't – like, I just have a hard time imagining that Texas A&M would, would willingly leave money on the table. But if you want to go real conspiracy theory here, this is Texas A&M's way of you getting know, a little, little bit back at the SEC for the old Texas Oklahoma thing. Suddenly that Gator Bowl cash out – isn't going to the Southeastern Conference anymore or, or all of it. Like Greg McCarty, they, they got to work on a dollar. So I'm like, oh, I, I have a feeling, just a gut feeling that however they restructure their financial arrangement, it's not going to really be fair to Rutgers. That's just my gut. Yeah, that's, that's usually how that works. Um, yeah, it's, it, it, and someone had another question from, uh, from and it's a long question from one of our readers that ties into this, Sarge. She was like, why does it feel like Rutgers wasn't the preferred, in, preferred invitee for this game? I mean, if you know the Gator Bowl, you're thinking, Maybe we'll get Clemson and we'll get Clemson, Oklahoma, or Clemson, Clemson, somebody good, you know, Clemson, Alabama. You think you're going to get in this game. And instead, you end up with, you know, Wake Forest. Rock. I mean, I, I can understand from their perspective why they were a little, they were hoping for something else. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> look, I mean, again, we've talked about this before, but, you know, if you look, just look at the five or seven teams that, that were on the board, I mean, you know, uh, Illinois was was doing everything they could. I mean, uh, Brett Bielema I think, was was washing, uh, um, you know, the, the the Gator Bowl officials' car, you know, yeah, you know, yesterday morning. I mean, it was, you know, he was doing everything he could to to, to get Illinois there. But Texas, again, Texas with their fan base and and you know, it, it, you know, putting them on, on on New Year's Eve, you know, against anyone really. I mean, they, they you know, they, I think uh, the Gator Bowl officials were were licking their chops. But again. You know, the Gator Bowl officials made it, comp- uh, you know, abundantly clear that, it, you know, they could not invite that, that the NCAA Oversight Committee, Football Oversight Committee had to, um, you know, basically rubber stamp, you know, the, the, their bylaw that, that has said that, eight, you know, if, in the event that five and seven teams had to be chosen, that it has to be uh, the teams, you know, with the, the top APRs and Rutgers was a team. So, they, they're, you know, they stuck with the NCAA rule. All right, another question. Uh, take this one, Cratch. What is a Big Ten team we can compare Wake Forest to for reference and how they play? I don't know that that's answerable, but give it a shot. Great question. Um, maybe like Michigan State or Indiana. I would probably like a comparable. The offense is very unique. Like it's it's out there. There's really no straight comparison. But I'm just thinking in terms like they, Michigan State might be the answer. Great offense, bad defense. Okay. All right. Yeah, that, that, that sounds about right. Yeah. I mean. It's uh, it's it's hard to come up with comparison, and I, I guess the one thing you will say they're not this overwhelming, powerful, physical team that you know if they were playing even I mean, even the other side, Texas A&M, or a team that would just has so many big bodies that would wear Rutgers down. So if you're looking for a positive, and there there's great transition to the to the next one, uh, Syracuse played Wake Forest tough, barely falling to them. I think Rutgers has a shot 
What do you all think? Sarge, do you think when you when you've looked when you've looked through the schedule and the games that uh, Siri, uh, Rutgers, I'm sorry, that Wake Forest has played, do you see any hope there? It's early in the year. Um, yeah, are we doing our picks right now, or are we, is this the time for predictions? We could do Why don't we do? Okay, want to do predictions? Sure. Yeah. Let's segue with uh, the um, so right. you know, I, I'm I, you know the the biggest issue is going to be you know. I don't see how Rutgers defensive backs are going to be able to, to match up with those two wide receivers. We're really, really good. Um, you know, they, they I'm just, that, that's going to be the biggest issue. Yeah. I think physically Rutgers could match up well with, with, with Wake Forest. I think defensively, I think there will be some opportunities for Rutgers to score. I think they're going to throw a lot at them, you know, from, you know, I know Graciana's talked about keeping it simple, but the, you know, bowl games are typically a time where you probably unload, you know, the bulk of your trick plays. So, and they do have a lot of trick plays in, in Sean Gleason's playbook. So, you know, I think they'll be able to score some points, but you know, that, that I cannot see Wake Forest not scoring more than 30 points. And if Rutgers, you know, we haven't seen Rutgers really break out, you know, since, uh, you know, since, well, Indiana, you know, but, um, you know, they're going to have to have that type of performance at the game where, where like, like they played against Indiana. I think uh, it's going to be competitive than, than a lot of people think. I think they're going to put on a good showing, but I think ultimately I think Wake Forest is just going to be too, too, too much to handle. Yeah, I wonder, that's a great that's, on that point, Cratch, the idea that do, you, do they empty out the trick plays or is this a situation where Rutgers just has to hope that they can control the time of possession somehow that they can get if Pacheco plays. And this is why I think he's so important. They, they can, they can ride it out. They can keep Wake Forest offense off the field. Will we see an actually more vanilla ball control approach? on offense? I think that might be the way to go. I mean, obviously you sprinkle in the tricks because again, as Sarge mentioned earlier in the show, this is an infomercial and you're trying to sell it to recruits. So putting some razzle dazzle in the game plan is a good way to, especially if you get hit a home run or two is a good way to sell to recruits. Um, but yeah, I think this, like, I have a feeling that I know we're not doing our picks yet. I have a feeling this game is going to be relatively competitive and close. I don't necessarily think Rutgers is going to win the game, but at this, the, the, the quick turnaround, the fact that Wake Forest now has to shift gears and prepare for a new team. I just have this feeling that it's going to kind of make this game more manageable for Rutgers than it would have been otherwise, which sounds strange, but just the way kind of football works sometimes. So I think it's going to be a relatively close game and Rutgers is going to be able to hang in there, but I think they should try to run the ball, control the clock, keep their defense off the field because I think Sarge is right. Wake Forest, that offense is going to be a really bad matchup for Rutgers. It's interesting. You both think this is going to be a competitive game because when I saw the line, which is, is it really 11 and a half? I just don't see it. I, I think it's a bad matchup. I think it's, it's, it's an extraordinarily well-coached team with four, four, three extra weeks to prepare playing a team that's, that's currently gathering its players, doesn't know who's going to be on the field. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I get we would love to overthink these things. And, yeah, Rutgers is going to come out and play hard, and I, I believe that. And, they, you know, they, they are, they're a prideful group, and, this, and they're playing for the last two years. But just the circumstances, guys, uh, and even if the, even if it was, was all equal, I might feel this way about this matchup. If Rutgers did get this bowl bid on November 26th and has been practicing, it's just a it is a rough matchup for them. So that's my that's my feeling going in. I'm gonna I'll make my pick first, and then you guys can counter. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be your regular blowout, not your holy crap blowout. But I think they're gonna lose pretty soon like a, a 49-21 kind of game. Cratch, you want to go next? I'll go next. I'm going to say, oh, man. I'm going to say like 30, 35-24. Yeah, like 35. No, nah, that, that's that's too low for Wake Forest. I'm going to say like 42, 42 to 30. I can't so believe I'm saying Rutgers is going to score 30 points. But like, yeah, yeah. yeah like I think it's going to be like, I think Wake Forest, you know what? I think Wake Forest is going to win by like two or three touchdowns, but it's going to be, okay. rel- but it'll be a back end, you know, pull away effort. Sarge? Yeah, I mean, Wake Forest is averaging close to 40 points per game, you know, in the ACC, you know, just, you know, to, to, again, all signs point to Wake Forest scoring a lot of points. Um, and they also actually, you know, to, they have a really, really good k- kicker to boot. I think they, you know, uh, see what he did there? Kicker to boot. Never mind. Oh wow! Nice. Um, Merry Christmas. Um, <laughs> but so I, yeah, I think they're going to score a lot of points. I think forty-one twenty. 
41 is not a lot of points. Is that a lot of points? Well, they average over 40, but I, yeah, I, 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 I think, yeah, you'll probably get to a point where they're going to 41 is a lot of points. That's not, yeah, it's not a close game either. So you just said, you said it was going to be a close game. Now, you, now you're not picking a close game. Okay. Hey, I'll go 41-30. You're right. 4130. <laughs> Talked you into that. I talked you into it. I love it. Uh, it's great. I'm gonna go forty-two so twenty-eight. Forty-two twenty-eight. Forty-two twenty-eight. Forty-two twenty-eight. All right. Okay. Uh, all right. Good predictions. Um, what else we got? I got people who are asking me for my meatball recipe. You guys want to hear that? Or did, 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 I, I texted out that someone get done with us. I've been out there and cook our Italian feast for Christmas Eve. Meatballs. Here's the key, guys. Meatballs. You gotta get when you go to the shop. Right. Don't get the ground beef or the ground pork. You get the meat meatloaf mix called it's got pork veal beef in there you get the, the italian season you get the seasoned breadcrumbs you mix them all together a couple of eggs some milk i don't have i don't have a good uh i just a feel thing and then you got to fry them up you got to brown them in the frying pan before you cook them in the sauce that's what we do i mean I, did, did, did clemenza just join the uh podcast <laughs> <laughs> i love it clemenza. yeah you got it yeah <laughs> Great reference. If you don't know that reference, you're not friends. You're not, you're not friends with the podcast. Uh, anything else, guys? Do we even want to talk about basketball? I mean, uh, COVID is decimating. They're playing two games. Scratch. Is that like is that really going to happen? Supposedly, that's what their plan is. Their plan is to play. They pushed back the uh, the main game a day, and they're going to play Central Connecticut State on on New Year's Day. Um, I think it's a little it's a little of a dicey roll because you've already got one horrible quad four loss to play twice in three days. You know after a well, after a two week layoff when you had COVID issues. I mean, you know they should beat Maine, so, but again they should have beat Lafayette. So I, I'm intrigued to see. You know, I, I get I totally get playing one game before you get back in the Big Ten play, but to play two, I think is pressing your luck a little bit. But we'll see. Thoughts. Anything else? No, I mean, you know, I, I, I will say this. I mean, this will probably be the last podcast we do of, of 2021, but it's been an amazing year from, from a yes. Rutgers. I'm doing that, that that story, I think, for Christmas Day on just the, the Rutgers stories of the year. But think about it, guys. I mean, you know, you, you had, you know, this improbable bowl. Uh, you, you, you had, you know, um, you know, men's basketball. Uh, men's lacrosse, women's lacrosse, all snap long NCAA tournament routes. You had the first Big Ten regular season title uh, won by the, the women's soccer uh, program, which also went to the College Cup. You had the first Big Ten tournament title won by the field hockey team. You just had so much. And, you know, considering where we started when the calendar flipped to 2021, when, you know, fans weren't allowed and, you know, and, you know, and we're still dealing with, you know, you know, teams that were shut down, you know, to, to now. It's been an amazing 2021. Probably the most exciting it, uh, that I can remember for, for Rutgers fans. I mean, just basketball alone would have, would have, made, would have elevated into one of the top uh, years excitement-wise and, and, things, and things to root for. But, yeah, you're absolutely right. And this is just – this is really just the cherry, uh, getting, this, getting this wrinkle thrown at you in the most unlikely way. I hope if some of you are there, we'll see you at the airport. At least I will, or you'll you'll drive past Sarge going 87 miles per hour on I 95. Is that the way you're going? Where you're going? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Cratch, enjoy the wedding, enjoy the holidays. Uh, we'll we'll all be back here to talk about it when it's over. Merry Christmas, to everybody. We'll see you on the other side. Thank you for listening to the Rutgers Rant. To participate in the conversation and receive live updates about the Scarlet Knights directly to your phone, sign up at nj.com slash insider. You haven't heard enough from me yet, huh? Steve Politi here for one last thank you to this episode's sponsor, New Brunswick Development Corporation, and to listeners like you who make it all the way to the end of the show. We'll see you again soon.